Hi guys, welcome to this week's tutorial. So this week is a bit different compared to um, most of my tutorial weeks. Uh, excuse the shuffling in the bean bag there, but I can't seem to get Taylor out of the bean bag, so I'm just going to hope that she doesn't move around too much. So this week's tutorial is of a um, drawing that I did as a commission piece. So this is a black Labrador named Luther. And this one came with a whole set of challenges. Um, the first challenge was the size that I had to draw it in. So I drew it in a um, 14 by 16 portrait size um, drawing. So that is quite large. And then the problem that I faced with that, it's not the size of the drawing that's the issue, it is the quality of the photograph. So going from a bad quality photograph and then having to draw something that large means you need to put a lot of detail in your work so that it looks realistic and that it looks so and so that it looks okay. So the challenges that I faced was having to try and find a way to put in those details without being able to see any of the details. Um, the reference photo was um, also very very dark on one side of the face so you, I, I couldn't see any detail on one side of the face um, let alone even see a tiny bit of detail in the eyes so I had to guess so much, I had to guess the colors that I needed to use in the eyes, I had to guess where certain values were darker than other values I had to guess the direction of the fur and I had to um, pretty much improvise on a lot of it but the nice thing is that there is a lot of reference photos out there so I just try to find a bunch of other photos of other black Labradors so that I could get an idea of coloring and um, get an idea of where certain shadows lie and where certain directions of the fur go especially the neck and chest area because that's completely blacked out in the reference photo I can't tell um, I can't even tell where the bend in the arm is um, the, with the way the dog is leaning on the couch. So um, that was quite tricky and it all paid off in the end. <laughs> so I am going to pretty much explain the things I faced as I go ahead with it and then that way you'll be able to see what I mean. And um, you will also be able to see that you can take a bad quality photograph and turn it into something that looks very realistic and very beautiful. If you can develop your skill to this extent, it's a great selling point for you because you can actually sell the fact that you can change bad quality photographs into something that looks very um, new and realistic and updated. And a lot of people are sitting with old photographs and they don't have the ability to take photos of that person or that animal anymore because they may have passed away um, or they just don't have the equipment to do anything like that so it, it makes it something that is treasured but because it's so small and the quality is so bad it would be magnificent if they could find someone who can change it in a way to make it all beautiful again and make it larger and it's just a memorable piece and it's it's really something that people want to be able to to find or have an artist do that for them but it is quite a challenge the biggest challenge being that when you change something um, you're using so many different reference points that by the time you actually get to the end result it might not look like the same animal or person so that is the biggest risk that you take because you need to really really focus on what you do have available in the reference photo and make sure that when you're looking at different reference photos to find coloring and things like that that you don't incorporate too much of those details into the drawing to make it look different to the actual um, person or animal that you're drawing so that's it's a, it's a very scary thing and it's something that I don't feel I've mastered yet um, but I'm getting to the point where I feel quite confident. So here is a um, comparison between the reference photo and the drawing and then um, this should give you an idea of what I was able to see and what I was able to create um, in terms of detailing and dimension if I can put it that way. Um, okay, so now I am going to jump right in and show you guys the whole process. 
Okay, so the very first step in all of this is I filled in the blackest of black areas. So the areas I knew that were going to be super, super dark. And um, I just lightly filled it in with my Prismacolor Premier Black Pencil. And softly shaded pretty much the entire drawing um, in black. And I used different reference photos in this process as well. So that I could get a feel of where those really, really dark values were going to be. And I felt that being... Be, felt like when I was able to put those dark values down it would make it a lot easier for me to um, work on it in terms of detailing so by having those dark values down first I'm able to locate where the darker areas are and I'm slowly able to work out the direction of where the fur and things are supposed to go and then it makes it a little bit easier to progress with adding the um, shadows and details um, over the top of that so I'm pretty much just scribbling ahead I want to um, I have a light outline everywhere so I want to sort of um, get a base down so that I don't need to work on that outline anymore it is a black Labrador the whole um, animal is going to be very very dark so I'm not going to be too worried about um, lightly scribbling with the black all over the place because it'll be really really easy to fix it up if I do need to go um, a little bit lighter but I won't have to because um, it's a very very dark animal <laughs> so the reference photo shows you how dark it is and the reference photo almost looks blue everything looks very very blue so <laughs> later on I'll explain the problems that I face but you're gonna see everything's gonna look like it's gone to crap because <laughs> I practically turn the dog purple and then I turn the dog blue and then I eventually get the right sorts of shades of grays and blues and purples and and black so it's supposed to look black even though it's got lots of blues and purples and all sorts of funky colors in there and you will eventually see how it works out so don't freak out I did freak out a little bit at one stage but um it does you just have to persevere and it does work out and it ends up looking really really amazing so the neck area that I did I took that from um, another reference photo of the same dog so that was really helpful because I could see where the sort of um, folds were in the neck and then I was able to sort of incorporate that in with the on the top of the scarf so that did make it a little bit um, easier with the neck so the chest area I'm just pretty much filling in black and there there's a line there under the scarf right through the middle you can see that line which is where I initially put the fold of the elbow of um, Luther in and it just didn't quite seem right so this was also another thing where I had to really focus on how I am placing my shadows um, to make sure that it looks realistic because that arm it just it looked completely wrong but I was um, you have to identify things like that quite early in a portrait um, to make sure that you don't work on an area and then it gets to a point where it's too late to actually fix it so these early stages it's good to take a good step back review what you've done so far and work out if your values are in the correct place before you go ahead with all the detailing so now I am just um, blending in all that black. So I'm using a tissue to kind of get those really black areas done quickly. And then I'll use a brush on all the rest of the areas. This is going to help me um, now because I'm going to see different values. And I'm going to be able to work details in a little bit easier as well. Um, so already just by doing this you're creating a three-dimensional kind of form. So it's... It does make the nose look like it's far forward and it makes the one side of the face is darker because there's more light on the left side of the face. So um, you can identify things a little easier after this process. So just making sure that I fill in all the um, right sorts of values in all the right areas. Um, this is with the scarf. I just want to sort of find my colors. I know that it's sort of a... A beautiful kind of teal blue kind of scarf so I want to just put in those shadows and start creating more values and forms so I do kind of stop not to um, 
not too long into the scarf and then I carry on with Luther because I am still at a point where I'm not sure how far I want to go with this drawing and if I'm going to succeed so I didn't want to put all the details into the scarf before the time just in case I had to start from scratch again so with the scarf, scarves and clothing with creases and things um, can be really really fun and easy to draw because you literally just fill in the darkest values in the folds first and then you fill in the rest lighter and it just it gives it that three-dimensional look automatically so with the eyes the eyes I couldn't really see but I had a look at a lot of reference photo and I just used those colors that I found were sort of the majority kind of um, eyes the the eyes that majority of black labradors have they have a dark brown sort of eye and it has a nice um mustardy sort of um brownish center color which just makes it look um quite beautiful and it makes it pop out so having the eyes in does make it um i don't know it brings a drawing to life the eyes are really my favorite part to do and this was tricky because again I couldn't see any details in the eyes so I had to really try and figure it out and also another thing I was afraid of with the eyes is that you don't want the eyes to look wrong because if they look wrong it's gonna make the entire dog look like a different dog and you this is a commission so you want the animal to look like that animal so there's a lot of risk that you take in something like this so make sure that you can actually that you know what the risks are before um, you take on a commission that that someone is you know very serious about because you want to do it right and you don't want to end up in the end them saying that does not look like my dog I'm sorry I don't want it because that will crush your little heart and it won't you know it will certainly pull you back a little bit because you feel like you can't accomplish something like that but you can you just really have to focus put a lot of focus in so observation with something like this is extremely important so with the nose um, I could see where the the lightest highlights were from the reference photo and I could see where the darkest darks were so um, it was actually a lot of darkness in there so I had to also again use another reference photo of the same dog luckily um, I used this another reference photo to find out where exactly those um, nostrils were and where exactly the little split in between the in between the snout was and how it was going to have its little hairs come from the nose down towards the mouth and where those sort of um, folds and shadows start occurring as well so here I there's quite a bit of gray in Luther's um, face so I made sure that I still created that sort of texture under the nose and then I'd use a lighter Prismacolor pencil to sort of bring out those little hairs of grey and value and things like that. So things are going to start getting very scary right now. <laughs> so I just warn you in advance that this is okay. I'm adding blues and I'm adding purples and these colors are going to end up making the dog look like he's just got a rash all over his face but it's okay because these are the under layers these are the layers that are really going to complement your details as you proceed through the rest of your work so here the eye looks extremely blue and now I'm adding purple to it as well because purples and blues really complement something that is black so if you are going to do a black stallion or anything with black fur or hair you want to use blues and purples because it really really complements the blacks that you would use in there as well so the blue still looks pretty extreme and that around the eye and it does I was getting a bit confused over here because I kept looking at my reference photo and I kept looking at the colors of the reference photo when I was actually trying to take note of colors of an entirely different picture because the print that I printed out was so blue that everything just looked completely blue blue and black that's like the only colors I felt I could see in that picture so I was really confusing myself by looking at my reference photo to make sure I get the values right and looking at another reference photo to make sure I get the colors right so you really have to actually stop and think about what you're doing before you put it down so that it doesn't become too too confusing or too um, 
yeah, incorrect sort of. So now I'm coming in with a purple and I'm going to put it all over the face. All over the face now right now it looks okay but the minute I blend it in with the solvent you're gonna be like oh my gosh that's just been wrecked that's how that's how I feel I felt for a while I had to walk away and be like do I have to start over or can I really actually make this work so I, I haven't gotten to a point in a drawing like that in a long time but I did get to that point now so it was it was quite a thing to experience so also take note that I am always using very very gentle strokes. I'm never pressing firmly, I'm always pressing gently and I'll slowly build up layer after layer after layer and then towards the end is when you start adding the real details. So the first few layers are all about getting your colors in the right place and getting your values in the right place and not worrying about any details. You only worry about the details towards the end. Okay, so now I'm going to blend with the solvent and you're going to see what I mean. Everything is going to turn purple and it's just going to look like this poor animal got really bad sunburn. <laughs> so um, that's what happened there. And as it dries, it starts getting more and more purple and more of a matte look. And then you start freaking out even more and you're like, oh my gosh, why did I pick that color? What was I thinking? So that was a bit um, freaky, but it ended up working out like I said. So using indigo blue, I am going to come over and create more values and more details and I'm going to, hey honey, come let me scratch your ear. There we go. So I'm going to um, fix that all in. Now I wanted to get a smoother look after I added um, all the like blues and grays and all I did was take a tissue, I didn't dip it in solvent or anything. And I just went over the entire thing with the tissue to just get everything to look really smooth. Now it's got to, to, gotten to a point where it looks really, really dark. And you're like, oh my gosh, I've gone to dark. How am I going to fix this and make it lighter so that I can get those highlights coming through? That's the advantage of drawing in this way. When you layer with solvent you and you do light layers of color, you can come over with your wax-based pencils with a lighter color to add those additional highlights. Now, like I said before, this is a very, very dark drawing. So I wasn't afraid of going very dark quickly. So it was easy for me to add the lighter highlights. Honey, now's not the time to play, baby. Hmm? I'm going to make noise. My one rich back girl, Honey, has the knack for... She goes to her sister and then she starts biting her ears and everything. And all you hear is this like growling and crying with the way they're playing with each other biting each other's ear and neck and everything and you can just tell by the body language that that's what she wants to do and i can just imagine what that would sound like on the camera <laughs> anyway so i'm using a lighter color and i'm starting to put in sort of strokes so that i can see where the directions of the lighter furs or lighter highlights are going to go over the nose and in the areas of highlight so this is where you can start adding details and you can just start getting an idea of shape and form and the direction of um, the different sorts of um, pieces of fur that are going on around the nose and everywhere else. Now I did smooth this all out again but you can see that the lighter highlights of the Prismacolor still remain there but they're not too light, they aren't too obvious so they start blending in quite nicely. I did a lot of layers on the face and I kept building and I kept fixing and I kept blending and I kept carrying on and the best part is that as long as you light with the pencils and you keep layering with your solvent you can get away with so many layers. I didn't get to a point, I thought I was going to get to a point where my colors were going to start layering too much where they'd actually start mushing together and getting that real wax feel. But I'm lucky that it didn't get to that point. But I was borderline there, so um, I really had to keep an eye on that. So again, taking note of my colors, I'm using the bluish grays. I'm using the cool grays because I want them to enhance on the black. And um, now I'm trying to focus on all the highlighted areas. Now I might look very highlighted and extreme at the moment, but that's okay because it's easy enough to blend that in and make it a little more subtle so it pushes more into the background. 
So I'm making sure I start creating a form of direction. So I'm creating texture by using short little strokes, which is going to give the illusion of short little pieces of fur going in different directions on the forehead. So as you go towards the eye, you're going to start changing direction towards that eye in terms of the direction of the fur. And as you go towards the other eye, you start changing to the opposite direction. Um, so that the fur starts going towards that way. So it's not all just going to be straight pieces of fur. So now I'm going to end up doing a lot of work around the eyes because I felt like the eyes were just not quite right yet. The eyes themselves needed to pop out a little bit more and I needed to create or work on the highlights and the fur around the eyes because the like you can see the left eye at the moment it's so black around the eye that it just it looks strange it looks weird it's like it's just a hole in the face and there in in the middle is like a sort of marble eye and i didn't like the look of that because that's not the way it's supposed to look so i'm going to work on that a bit later now i'm going to darken up the eyes a bit more and enhance them a bit more i feel like they're too light because the fur is so so dark and i feel like they can pop out a little bit more and and become a little more striking at the same time so that's what i'm doing now i want to make them pop out a bit more I did use a white Prisma color pencil just there to sort of enhance the two little highlights in each eye. Now I'm using a very sharp indigo blue pencil to do those tiny little um, pieces of fur that come out the side. Now the background of this image is going to stay white, so you don't want it to look like it's cut out and just pasted on a white piece of paper. So you want to also get those tiny pieces of fur that go over the background correct as well so that it gives it that three-dimensional look and the, the white background doesn't take away from the image that it all looks like it flows and like it's meant to be that way so now I just want to focus on getting all my edges nice and smooth and correct on the ears and that is um, a stage that it will then get me ready to start adding details in the ears as well um, I want to make sure that it looks correct in contrast with the white background. So that's what I'm doing now. Now I'm using my, my Prisma color pencils because I can layer with lighter colors over the darker colors. So that's what I'm doing there to form a texture on the ears and to bring out some of the highlights. So then on top of the ears he's got some fluffy little pieces of hair that are coming out so I'm making sure to put them in there and that's just making those edges look like they are correct and three dimensional. Now I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to feel a lot more confident in the drawing as well. The colors are seeming to flow a bit better and it's starting to look like a black dog but it's not like a purple or blue dog it's starting to look like a black dog and the purples and blues are starting to get a little more subtle so that they don't end up um, taking over the black and making it seem like it's blue or purple so now I'm going to start working on and around this eye because it just it doesn't feel quite right Oh, now I'm fixing my edges on the other side of the face first. So I have been making a mess on the other side of the page with my hand because I have a flat hand. I can't work with my hand sort of in the air because I just can't work with my arm up as much. I don't know how people work with easels where they at an angle and their arm is up all the time you've got to have so much strength in your arm to be able to hold it up for so many hours at a time i like to lean down and i don't know if that's the best way to do it but anyway so i put a piece of tissue under my hand so that i don't smudge any more of the white paper and make more of a mess on the other side um saves me from cleaning it up later so the eye is slowly starting to look a bit better. It doesn't look as black, but it took me a while to, I did a lot of work on the eye. You'll see I keep coming back to the eye and I keep working it until I'm satisfied with the outcome because I found this eye to be quite tricky. Um, I found most of it to be really tricky because it's, 
it's so much easier when you have something to look at. You don't have to do so much thinking about it. But when you, when you have something that you need to guess or improvise or enhance without actually being able to see it, is quite a challenge, which was actually really good to go through because there are some amazing artists out there that are just able to do these details and quality and make it look so real and it's just coming out of their imagination. I do not have that ability. I need to see something to be able to draw it. I can't just have it pop out of my head in complete detail. Yes, I can do shapes and forms and things like that, I think, out of my head, but when it comes to detailing, I need to see detailing to get it that realistic. I can certainly do cartoons, no problem, just out of my head, <laughs> but not something like this. So working on the nose, you can see that it looks extremely highlighted now. So I want to start having everything blend in a lot better and um, put in all those colors. So I'm using an indigo blue of my Faber-Castell polychromos pencil and I am adding in those darker blues and then I'm using my Prisma color. Um, it's a cool gray kind of color and I am going to sort of just blend it all together nicely so it doesn't look so streaky or... Um, uneven so it's just gonna push all those colors together beautifully so still working around the eye and you need to when you're doing an eye you also have to work on the focus on the fur around the eye because they almost go in like a swirly kind of form so as the eye rounds the fur is still following that rounded direction um, so take note of that because that does help enhance an eye or make it look a little more realistic so always just take note of direction of fur so still working on the detailing on the nose like I said I just I went back and forth back and forth I kept layering I kept building and I just went on for ages because I know that this was <laughs> it was a very very tricky drawing so I did notice afterwards, like, if you have a look from the camera, it almost looks like the drawing is very, very matte. Um, you, it just, it does, it looks, that's the best way to describe it, it looks matte. And I found that I did have, like, a sort of film over my camera, so I needed to clean that off. But I only realized that afterwards when I started looking at the video and I realized, oh, you know, it, it kind of looks like it's a little bit milky or sort of like not blurry but it doesn't look as clear as I would like it to so I do apologize about that so working on the details now I'm gonna work on the next ear having those little wandering hairs on top of the head come out and then again I'm just gonna define the edges a little bit better and then I can come in and start adding the details in the ears now because I made the ears so dark and you'll see that I add a lot of lighter colors with the Prismacolor wax based pencils um, it's almost like you, pretend like you're just working on a black surface and you are working on a black piece of paper and you're using your lighter colors to get the definition and things out that's pretty much what I'm doing so I created a black surface of for the dog and then I used a lot of lighter colors over the top so it's not the usual way where um, I gradually go darker and darker this time I'm working dark and gradually going lighter and lighter um, so but it's not very often that I do that but because this is such a dark animal um, I am able to do that and I found that that was sort of the easier approach so now that everything's dried from the solvent and that, now I feel like there are some areas that can have further value. So that's what I'm doing with my black pencil now because I just, I've just used so much dark blue, indigo blue, that now I feel I can finally come in with the final details using my black. And that's just going to enhance those values just that extra little bit more and just make it look so good. Like this was my favorite part of this drawing, I think, because I got to a point of relief. I was like okay this is actually starting to look really nice and I'm quite proud of the outcome so far for the head and then I was like oh I'm gonna have to incorporate all these colors into the rest of the body and make it work but it ended up being quite easy because I had just endured all of that by doing the head 
So that face is starting to look really, really nice. It looks three-dimensional, it looks beautiful, and it's starting to, to look real. And I'm starting to, and I had, I took a step back and I looked at the reference photo and I looked at the drawing and I was like, okay, I feel so much better about this because it just, it does look so real and three-dimensional and the details um, ended up looking quite, quite nice. I don't want to sound vain or anything, but I did end up feeling very, very proud of the outcome because it was quite a scary process and I'm sure after you saw what I had just had to go, what I had to go through to get all, all of this right, um, you'll understand the relief in the end. <laughs> but it just goes to show that it takes a lot for you to stuff up a drawing. It's, it's very easy for you to fix. It might be time consuming to fix, but you can fix it. It takes a lot for you to completely screw it up. So don't be afraid with things like this. You just have to persevere and see how it goes. Because I know that I did feel the more time I spent on it and I wasn't sure if it was going to work. I was like, I'm wasting more time whereas I could have started the next, the new one again over and then um, it would have saved me time instead of trying to fiddle and keep trying to fix this one and it's not going to work. But it ended up working and believe it or not, most of the time it ends up working. So don't give up on your drawings too soon because the beginning phases are always going to look worse than what you think. So with the neck there, I just used the lighter Prismacolor pencils to sort of have the folds in the neck stand out a little bit more. And I did them in like a curvy motion which gives you an indication of depth and dimension under the chin. I also used that very light pencil to lightly, lightly do the whiskers on the nose. Those whiskers are so fine, you don't want to make them too white because then they just look fake. So um, be careful not to do that because in the beginning when I started drawing my whiskers would always look so fake because they'd be too thick and they'd be one color so try and be very careful with your whiskers don't overdo it and make sure that your pencil is extremely sharp okay so now the fun part comes with the scarf so I'm taking note of the folds and that and the values and I'm gonna do all the darker areas first and then the lighter areas and then you can pretty much just lightly go over the entire scarf with a light pencil because all those dark values are in and then all of a sudden it just pops out and it's three-dimensional it's that easy the tricky part with scarves though or with any sort of material that's got a lot of folds is if it's textured so this I'm lucky it's it just looks like a I don't know if it's cotton or what it is, but it's not like it's knitted or anything, so it doesn't have an extreme texture, so I can make it quite smooth um, without worrying about the texture, and that does make the folds and that the only thing that you have to get right is just the folds. You don't have to get folds and texture right, um, so it makes it quite easy. When it comes to something that's knitted and it's got a lot of texture, then that's when it starts getting a bit tricky. So I'm using an indigo blue, not a black, and the indigo blue is going to be the real dark, dark areas in the scarf for the moment. When it comes to the darkest of dark areas that you want to use black with, that's what you do last. So that would be your touch-up sort of thing. Um, when the, the real dark folds in the scarf are completely black, but you don't add that black until the end. So you'd rather use an alternative color, which in this case I'm using an indigo blue, which is the darkest of blues that I have. And that's just going to help me identify those really dark folds first. So just look at, that's just value that I created there. And look at how you can already work out that it's got different folds and it's three-dimensional and it's a scarf. That's all it takes for it to look three-dimensional. It's just taking note of those dark values and putting them in the right place. And everything else just seems to flow. And blending this with a solvent is so satisfying because it just ends up <laughs> really looking good. And then you just work those details more and more. So now I'm coming in with a, a color and I'm going the entire area, all, all of it, all the light areas, all the dark areas. I'm just going over with that color. And then I'm going to blend it with a solvent and you're going to see how it's going to start looking really, really good. So 
So you can see how many times I'm actually dipping the brush in the solvent. So every time I go left with the brush, that's me dipping it in the solvent. Um, so because you don't want to have too much solvent on there. Because if you have too much solvent, it's going to lift a lot of the color off. It's going to take longer for your paper to dry and it's just not going to give as great a result. So if you want to cover a big area quickly, rather use a bigger brush than use more solvent. Now I'm going to start coming in with sort of details. So I'm going to use my lightest of blues to find out where the really light highlighted bits are because the left of the scarf, the left of the face and the scarf is where the light's coming from. So that's where the lightest areas are going to be. So the highest and lightest areas is where I'm going to put the lightest blues and then the, the lowest or crunched up bits is where I'm going to put the, the darkest colors because that's where it's all folded and it's the light doesn't reach those areas. And then if you can't get the lighter colors over the top with your wax or uh, with your Faber Castell polychromous pencils, that's when you'll come in with your Prismacolor pencil and look how easy that really light blue just stuck on the top real easy. Um, over the darker colors. So now I'm coming in with my Prismacolor Indigo Blue and I'm going over those areas that need to be really dark. Just to enhance the shadows and that a bit um, more. For a while there I didn't actually want to blend with the solvent after these stages because the the pencils almost formed a texture on the scarf. If you can tell, it looks like the scarf has a nice sort of texture. And I wanted to sort of leave it alone um, so that it just looks like that texture. But the more I looked at it, the more I started to realize that it looks too much like crayon. So I wanted to get that all smoothed out. <laughs> So also make sure you use background colors, like I did use a bit of the purples in there, in the shadows that I used in the fur. I used the same indigo blues in the, in the scarf. So you don't just want to make the scarf just blue and not add any purple because then it's just going to stand out too separate from, the, um, from Luther. So you want to always ensure that you incorporate your background colors into your foreground colors as well. Okay, so now we are finally at the point where we are doing the rest of the body. I did time lapses a little bit faster um, so that you can, yeah, because I'm just covering the entire area with the same sort of colors and then um, you'll still be able to see what I, I do. So from the reference photo, I just made sure that I looked, the real, real highlighted areas is what I am trying to pinpoint now. So before... Because this whole area is so black on the reference photo, I wanted to get the highlights in first so I knew exactly where the lighter areas were and then I would go and look at a bunch of references to find out more about the darker areas because I couldn't see that in the reference photo so I needed to find out how the direction of the fur in the chest was going to work with the angle that the dog is sitting on to still make it look normal and to make sure that I get the elbow crease and the other arm in the right space because that elbow um, just there under the point of the scarf you can see that arm just looks too wide it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't look right so I was like okay I'm, I'm not gonna worry about the darkest areas right now I'm gonna worry about the highlighted areas and then walk work towards the darkest areas I did find some reference photos of dogs that are sort of lying down or sitting in the same sort of position to try and find out what direction the fur went into so that's also where I managed to fix where the arm or the, the bend of the, um, the leg was over there because it was just way too wide. So that is already starting to look a little bit better and, um, and that's sort of what I did. So I just looked at different reference photos and I worked on the directions of fur in the chest and the darkest of dark areas I did put in there under the arm it's really really black so I didn't want to worry too much about adding any detail there because it was okay for that to just stay black and then I also knew that it would be okay for me to kind of just put 
um, the lighter Prismacolor pencils over the top if I needed to. But for now, I was going to make those areas really dark and I could just leave them dark and um, not worry too much about it. Now I am filling in black sort of streaks in the right direction. So the chest, the, the fur seems to go on the top of the arm, the arm pit, if I could put it that way, the hair is going to go sort of towards the arm. And for the rest of the chest, the hair is going to go down the middle sort of towards the belly button so you want to make sure that that hair is flowing in the right direction um, and that it's not all going towards the arm because I don't know for some reason I felt like I needed to put it all towards that way because of the angle that the dog's lying in but it, it didn't by looking at other photos I did get an idea of how it was actually supposed to flow so now I'm just blending that in and making it all soft so that I'd be able to sort of add the details over the top from now on. But because of how I created those streaks with the black pencil, you get a sense of direction of the chest hair and the fur anyways, even though it is such a dark area. So now I'm coming over again with some highlighted areas to enhance the direction of the fur and also to give it a more realistic three-dimensional look. So I'm going to come in with softer sort of strokes um, to give you an illusion of fur and to give you an illusion of it being softer as well. So now I'm sort of focusing on details. So you can see the direction I'm working in here. I know that right beneath the scarf there's going to be a shadow so I'm going to make those areas a little bit darker than the other pieces of fur that are sort of sticking out over the shoulder area if that makes any sense. So at this point as well, I'm so careful because I finally got the head right and after everything that I've been through with drawing the head, I do not want to go through that whole process again by screwing up the body. So I did take my time with the body and I did look at the reference photo a lot and I did think about what I was doing before I put it down on paper. So this back part on the back is quite easy. Everything's going in the right direction. I can see where the fold or the crease is in the skin over there. So I'm just going to um, put those details in. So that, that was really easy to draw. And it was almost like a little relief bit out of all the stressful parts of the drawing. <laughs> to be able to do an area that I didn't have to worry too much about because I knew the direction and how to do it real easy without having to worry too much about it. So yeah, that was really, really, really nice. And the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm loving it. So it's just all turning out to look pretty amazing and, and very, very good. And this is another thing, as an artist, things like this become so rewarding. And this is when you start to realize that it's so worth going through some of these challenges because sometimes you like, this is taking way too long and I am sick of looking at it and I am tired and I don't think that I'm ever going to get this right. And these are, are, are life challenges that you face and you face a lot of them with art really soon. And <laughs> you have to endure it because the satisfaction that you get in the end is just the biggest reward that you can get when you're doing art. Like the satisfaction I got at the end of doing this drawing was insane probably a lot more than what I've gotten in a while because it just was such a challenge and there was so much things that I faced but there's so many lessons in all of this um, particularly with patience like patience is one massive thing that you learn when you're doing something that's this time consuming so it's definitely um, yeah definitely a challenge but it's such a reward when you get to the end result and it's a reward for yourself it's like you've, you've done this all for yourself it's it's not a reward that someone else has to give you it's not the fact that you're pleasing someone else it's the fact that you're rewarding yourself because you've persevered and that's an amazing feeling so now i'm just blending now when i'm blending the blacks in that over here i'm also blending in the right direction because i've got solvent on my brush i still want to keep the direction going in the right way and it will still, I'm using a flat brush, so it's still creating sort of those strokey kind of feels, uh, strokey kind of um, motions, which does help um, with the look of the fur a bit more as well.
So this is the point where I decided that I am actually going to blend the scarf because the texture is a bit too much. So I want to just smooth that texture down a little bit more. And then I'm also going to come in and enhance the dark shadows, I think with a black at this point too. And that's going to make that scarf look even more three-dimensional and realistic. And it's just um, going to make it look really cool. So I like that look a lot more. I'm glad um, I ended up being happy that I went over with the solvent again afterwards. Um, just to fix it up a bit more. Um, okay, now I'm jumping to the pore. So this is the bottom part of the pore. This was, I could see where the highlights were and the shadows in this one. So it's just a matter of adding a bit of details. But it was enough um, for me to actually just go ahead and draw it like a sword. And it will still give you, a, you will immediately identify that it's the, the bottom part of the pore um, that's sticking out in the back there. And that is... Um, yeah, what it is. Some funny shapes and that going on there, but it ended up looking okay. And it's, yeah, it doesn't draw away from the face. I think the face and the scarf are beautiful focal points. So your eye is immediately drawn to that first. Now, finally, with the couch or the ottoman that Luther's lying on, um, I'm creating the shadowed area just under the the chest area there because I know that area is going to be darker. And now I'm working in sort of like straight lines and checkered, or not checkered, but almost like hatching, hatch drawing. So you're going left to right and then later on you're going to go um, vertical, so from top to bottom, and then it's going to create that texture. I'm also creating some pieces of different areas of brown and putting... And the way I'm blending it as well from left to right is it's just forming that sort of texture. So I'm not worried about getting everything in a smooth look. I want it to look like a couch. I want it to have texture. So I'm just creating the darker areas in a streaky sort of way. And then adding a little more towards the top. And then I'm going to come in with a downward motion, I'm pretty sure, at some point. And then... Um, you can, there we go. So now it's I'm pretty much hatching those areas and that's giving a texture to the couch and the different browns and that in there is also helping with the values and the texture of the couch. Um, and it's starting to, to look good. Like the whole picture is starting to really take shape now. You can see that Luther's getting nice and comfortable on the couch and it's got such a such a nice stare. Like it's, he's, it's like he's looking straight into the truth of what you are and I like that I like when you can look at an image and that those eyes are on you they see you they see in you and I, I get that feel from looking at the drawing and I I like that I want other people to get that feel as well it's like that stare is just it's like it's, it's a I see everything kind of stare <laughs> now it's just getting all the final touches in. So this is the side of the couch but it's very very light and I didn't want to make it very dark either because it would take away from the drawing. It would just look like a dark patch on the side so it was very subtle when it came to drawing that. And then I just sign it with a black pencil and that is the drawing done. Oh, and I'm using a little bit of white to sort of just enhance the signature a little bit more and then go over it again with the black and it just made it pop out a little bit more. Because <laughs> I was that proud of it. <laughs> okay, so I wish... I've already sent the drawing to the owner and that, so I wish I could have actually held it up here and show... literally shown you the difference. Um, but I will do that with the photographs that I have so that you can see it that way. But, um, yes. I was very, very proud of the outcome of this drawing. There was a lot to learn and a lot to think about during the process of this drawing. And um, I hope that you could see that any artist faces these challenges, even as it, you will face it more as a beginner, as a beginner artist, but the more you grow, the less you face these challenges. But sometimes 
you will even as an advanced artist you will get to something that's gonna like take your breath away and you're gonna be like holy moly I haven't had to use my brain this much for a long time to focus the details in like this but those are things you need to remind yourself that that's that's life you need to still face challenges the more you grow it's not just going to become easy the big the more you become an expert you're going to find things that are going to like really challenge you and that's that's stuff that i actually look forward to because i feel like i really grow quickly when i face those challenges that i i learn so much in a short period of time and it just that's what helps everything else go smoother afterwards until you face the next challenge and then also the satisfaction in that you get afterwards because after I finished this drawing, I knew the next one was going to be so much easier and I was ready to start it. I was motivated and I felt like I was so accomplished with this one. Why stop? So now it's time to move forward because I'm just that motivated and so happy with what I've achieved that I just want to keep going. So it's very, very satisfying getting that, that kind of result. And then um, the next part was waiting to see what the reaction would be of the owner that um, commissioned me to do this piece of her dog, Luther. Now, I am friends with her on Facebook now, but she always posts pictures of her dog, and like her dog is her entire life. Like Luther is with her 24-7. He goes out with her on the boat. He travels with her. He's everywhere with her. So I know how much this means to her. So I was a bit nervous as to how she'd react because I want the dog to look exactly like Luther I want because I used so many different references I was a bit panicky because I wasn't sure how it would really you know result or what the result would be or what her reaction would be and her reaction was amazing her reaction was oh my word this is absolutely incredible and she had exclamation marks everywhere and she was just so so happy with it and she kept saying she can't wait to get it in the post and everything so I was very very satisfied with that outcome and then um, that's that's definitely something that's that's scary when you do a commission it's scary to find out what the owner thinks of it in the end because you always criticize yourself a lot more than anyone else does but usually you'd be amazed at how happy they are with what you've done and they appreciate the time and effort that you put into things so yes yeah, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this it was um, quite a thing to do but I'm very very pleased with the outcome and I'm very pleased that I can actually share this with you guys and hopefully this will make you feel a little more confident in your work as well knowing that anyone can face something like this at any time whether you're a beginner or an expert at what you do um, these are things that you're gonna face and it's okay you just have to endure it and finish it okay thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon bye